Good morning again, everyone. Welcome back again to the KSR YouTube channel. Another day on mullet. Me and Travis and CJ gonna put a little work in on this thing. And the big thing we're working on is finalizing the front here so that we can paint it. And then once we paint it, it's time for final assembly. Now, a lot of times you can just add stuff in, go back and like touch up the paint. We're trying to build it nice, so you know, we've added all of our brackets and you can see we've been waiting to paint everything. So what we try and do is get everything added bracket wise and then sand everything and come back and put a nice coat of paint on it. And then at least for the time being, all the paint will be nice and there won't be anything else added. Hopefully, there's probably gonna be something we forget, but hopefully not. And it'll be all pretty looking and it'll look finished and I've been working on finishing up some of the welding on the mid plate mounts. So we've got that still to wrap up. And then we kind of did some painting on the upper, or not painting, we did some welding around those just to pretty up the factory welds. I've got to weld a little bit in there. Travis has been working on smoothing the paint, knocking the paint off that was already on there. And we're getting close. So once we get all this done, we'll put the front end back on. Probably not in this video, but we gotta fabricate a tubular core support so it fits the radiator that we've bought for the car. We've got a pretty big radiator because of the drag week stuff. Big radiator, big fan package. And yeah, hopefully get a lot more done on this thing today. And then it'll be time to start wiring this thing and getting us ready to crank it up and get ready to go racing.
All right, everybody. So you saw a lot of welding going on on the time lapse. Um, you know, just cleaning up some of the different welds in different places, finishing the welds around the nuts for the motor plate. Uh, the last little bit I did there were the little stubs for the shock sensors or front shock travel sensors that uh, are going to go up there on the front. And before we stick the motor back in, we want to actually final mount the motor plate and uh, seal it to the block, which I use RTV between the motor plate and the and the block itself, just because down here, you know, if you put a gasket behind it up here, you've got to actually bend the motor plate a little bit to get down to these bolts. So we use RTV around these holes and then bolt it straight to the block there and there. And one thing we need to do before we can bolt the motor plate on for the final time is to mount the fuel pump. And we thought we were gonna be able to use Motion's new trick bracket, but for this particular combination of headers, it's not gonna work. Stop this from swinging. So you can see my little mark I've got there. That's gonna go somewhere right there, I believe. So we are going to drill a hole here, machine our own bracket or spacer that fits in here. And then I'm gonna weld around that bracket so it'll be bolted and welded. And then we're gonna do the same for the bottom. And then this will have an area to swing there. These cog belts that run fuel pumps and stuff, they don't have to be super tight because if you think about it, it's gotta jump out of these teeth on the on the cog belt pulley so as long as you've got as long as it's got enough tension where it won't jump out of the pulley it's good so we're installing this crank drive that goes on the front it's good bolt length and let me see those washers so this is a washer setup that I like to use on a bunch of stuff, and hopefully this shows up on video. These are called Nordlock washers. And if it's clear in the video, you can see there's serrations on these washers. And when they're bolted together, they tighten and everything goes to its thinnest diameter point this way. And then for them to loosen, they actually spread apart. So watch the gap. I don't know if this is gonna work or not. But you can watch the gap between the washers actually grow. So what has to happen there is for the bolt to loosen, the washers have to spread apart. So the only way that's gonna happen is if you're really putting a lot of load on it with a ratchet, little vibrations and stuff like that it's not coming loose. So we use that on like brake calipers, brake caliper mounts, anything we don't want coming loose. So that's what we've got going on here. Gonna walk you guys through the fuel pump mounting and machining process. And then hopefully we can get this sealed up. We've got a little bit left to do uh, cleaning the paint over there on the car itself. And we'll be getting that painted today and then hopefully putting the motor back in tomorrow. So. Follow along and see what we can do to this thing. So in the time that this was cutting. Travis and I were bouncing some different ideas off each other. And I think we're gonna do something a little different. We're gonna actually do it just like how we did it on the lawn dart, which I'm about to go show you. So instead of it bolting to the motor plate directly, we're gonna make it to where it bolts to a plate that's in front of the motor plate. Let's see if you can see it down in there. Maybe, can you see it? Mm, maybe. Yeah, so that plate bolts on and everything 
is solid and I'm gonna actually weld it where I didn't on this car. And then this silver diagonal piece that runs across there gives us a nice triangulation to keep that thing from swiveling because it is way hanging off the front of the motor. Not ideal, but it's gotta fit where it's gotta fit. This design will allow us to go ahead and mount the motor plate and then we can actually make the add-on for the, the fuel pump mount. And if we need to tweak it, it's not a, as big of a deal because it'll unbolt off the front of the motor plate. We'll go on from there instead of it being welded solid to the motor plate. So sometimes plans change, but if there's a better idea and you can do it, go ahead and do it.
All right, well, that's our fuel pump bracket fabrication. Got her all wrapped up here, mounted. I will probably do a brace that goes from here up to here, just to triangulate it against the, uh, the you know, the drag on that. We'll see. We'll see how strong it is without it. I did triangulate it on uh, on the one we did on the lawn dart, just because once you get the once you start getting the tension here on the belt, you know, it's trying to pull that, pull this bracket in and around. And since this thing's gonna be going on lots of long drives, which it won't have this belt on it while it's going on uh, the drives between tracks on race week. But I still want it good and sturdy so it doesn't fly off. Even though I know that's been kind of the theme for Ruby and Leroy to have the belts fly off. If this belt flies off, it shuts off because there's no fuel pressure. So, we uh, we got that all wrapped up. The motor is ready to go back in the car. And, off camera, this got finished painting, painted. And I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let that dry. It's been painted for about 12 hours now, but I'm gonna let it dry probably till tomorrow morning. And then we're going to slam this thing back together. So, appreciate everybody watching. We'll see you in the next one.